When I first started playing bass, I didn't have a amp for the first three years of me learning to play, and I thought that it would take me forever to learn because of it. But in times like these, we all have a choice that we have to make, which is to let our limits destroy our future or fuel it. My choice was to fuel it. So during this time, I discovered some ways that I could use to overcome this, and that's what I want to share with you today. So the first way that I practice, you know, on the road or at home um, without an amp is with an audio interface. What an audio interface is, is basically a module that allows you to record into a computer. Basically, it's like a way that you could record any like instrument, bass, guitar, any anything with the microphone or quarter inch cable to go into your computer and record audio. The one that I use is a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which means it has two inputs and two outputs. And it's just really a great little workhorse that gets the job done wherever I am. So with that, what we're able to do is to monitor, have a monitor, it has like a headphone. Most of them have this headphone output where you can monitor yourself. So you plug your guitar in and then you plug in your headphones and you have like a monitor where your headphone jack is. So you could do this with your bass if you wanted to outside of practicing, but for the circumstances of practicing, you don't really even have to add any software. You don't have to record through anything. All you got to do is plug it in and it's bus powered. So it powers itself from the computer. All you have to do is plug in your bass or plug in your guitar or plug in your piano and you can go straight through your interface and go straight to your headphones because it has this headphone output on the front right here. So that is one way of using it. Now, another way, if you don't really have a computer, um, a laptop or anything when you're on the road and you're just like, I just really just need to hear this. I'm in the airport. There's nobody around. I just need to like practice, you know, this song. Something I do is I take a little uh, iPhone, five watt iPhone block and I use it with my USB because you know, the cable is a USB cable. So I take the USB and I plug it into the iPhone block and plug it into the wall and it powers it. It may not be sending a signal anywhere when it comes to audio, that's the reason why the light's not on. But what it is doing is powering it enough to where you can hear yourself. So if you plug anything into it, it's gonna come out through your headphone jack, just like if you were practicing with your computer. Now, another way is using the iRig. If you don't know what an iRig is, I would suggest you check it out. Pretty much what it is, is exactly what we talked about before, an audio interface. But instead of having to plug it into your computer, you can plug it into your phone. And it's really, 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 really incredible. I love it so much. It's, it helps me all the time. The way it works is that you plug it into your phone or iPad and it has, and it's battery powered. So it's not like the uh, other interface where the, it gets the power from the computer. It has, it has a couple of AA batteries in the back. And what you do is you plug it in and then you download this app called the iRig Recorder app. And it allows it to, to activate and for you to be able to hear your bass. There's a headphone port on the side where you can listen to yourself and monitor yourself and hear what's happening. And then it has a quarter inch and XLR input on the front. And it also has phantom power. That's the reason why I like this iRig Pro IO is because it has phantom power. So if I wanted to use it for a microphone, I need to record something on a microphone, I can as well and be able to power it. So here's a little workaround that I use. So if I have to go over a song or if I need to review anything for like a gig or anything like that, I can without having to pull out all of my computers and all that kind of stuff. It's literally just my phone. So check this out. All right, so first I'm gonna open my iRig recorder app and then I'm gonna hit the three lines at the top right corner and click on the tab that says settings. Then I'm gonna scan down and find where it says background audio and cut that on. Then after that, I'm gonna back out of iRig recorder and I should see a red oval on the top left corner of my phone. And that lets me know the iRig is activated. After that, I can pull up my music and play it and also hear my bass um, as I'm listening to my music. So I could practice or learn whatever song I need to without having to pull out my computer or anything else. Some other ways you could use the iRig too is like when you're going live, if you're doing like covers or different things like that, when you're trying to record something when you're on the, the fly, when I, when I play, when I, every time you see me go live and I'm like playing somewhere, I always use the iRig. So there's a lot 
of different uses for the iRig. I may even do a video just on the iRig because there's so many different things you could do with it. But I just want to give you a way that so if you're traveling or if you're at home and you just don't have an amp or you don't have access to a bunch of equipment or anything, you just need something that's just going to be really quick and really easy to use, then this is a great, great, great investment. So one of the other ways you can monitor yourself or be able to hear yourself is using pedals and headphone amplifiers. Or you could think about them as headphone amps. These weren't around when I first started playing bass. These were like a really cool thought. You know, I'm like, man, if somebody came up with this, this will be a game changer. And now they have them, They're, they have them everywhere. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite ones that are really, really cool to um, and easy to use that you can use that are very, very portable. The first pedal I wanna talk about is the Tech 21 Fly Rig. It's a bass fly rig. I, this used to be the pedal that I used all the time on all of my videos. I use a different pedal now. I use the API uh, Transformer LX uh, for my for all of my tones and stuff like that for like compression and preamp. But before this pedal that I have now, I use the Tech 21 Fly Rig. And what's really cr incredible about it is that you can use it live and you can use it when you're recording at home or in the studio, um, which is really cool. And what's cool about it as well, and which is what I want to talk about when it comes to practicing and using it to hear yourself, it has a headphone output that allows you to connect into your pedal and hear yourself playing. Hear the bass playing through the pedal. Like you can literally use the onboard effects with the pedal, which is really, really cool. And so you can literally just sit there and just be jamming, have your headphones on, like if you're in an apartment and like wherever, a hotel, wherever, wherever you are and you're playing. It just gives you a lot of cool options and it really is a very nifty uh, product for only about $2.99, I believe. It's so much bang for your buck. I would really highly suggest it for anybody who's wanting to start off and having like a, a get a, a first pedal. You know, this is a great first pedal to kind of just get your feet wet with, you know, the whole tones thing and everything, especially when it comes to bass. Now, another one I've been hearing a lot of talk about in this, and it's really, really cool, is the Vox bass headphone amplifier. If you haven't seen those, man, they are super slick. You can literally put it in your pocket. It's so small. Basically what it does, it connects straight into your bass and you can plug your headphones into it. It has like a drum machine on it. If you want to practice, it has a metronome. I mean, they really outdid themselves with this one. I was like, my gosh, I wish I would have one. And they have ones for guitar too, which is the Vox AC30 one, which has like tones and a little distortion and different tones. So you can like literally just plug it straight in and not have to go through any pedals. And this is a pretty cheap solution. It's only about 40 bucks, $40. And you can literally hear yourself even record yourself going into like a Zoom recorder or going into an interface if you don't have a pedal or anything like that. Another great thing about it is that it has an aux in. So if you want to play tracks from your phone that you're working on or you use your, your eighth inch aux cable and plug it straight into it and you're good to go. You could play your audio and play your bass through it with some awesome tone. My last way is to use nothing. This is the way that I learned how to play bass. The first three to four years of me playing, I had no bass amp and I was playing on Sundays, started playing at camps, and literally the only way that I had to practice was literally with my bass, lit, putting my ear up to the, on the bass, the body of the bass, and practicing. And, and also just hearing my strings and just really going, finding a quiet room. As sometimes you don't just, you don't have enough money to get like any of this equipment. Even if it's like 30 or 40 bucks, you may not even have that much money. So when you're in these, this kind of situation, don't let your limits limit you. So I just found a way, to, to do it, I started listening. I would play my, play the song and then I'll have a good play it really soft and try to play with it, try to have the even you know volume between them. Or I would just like play a little bit and then try and figure out what it was, play a little bit, try and figure out what it was, and just did like that for, for years. And literally that is one of the best ways. It trained my ear to know what, you know, certain tones, to hear certain notes. I just like sat there, I listened really intently, and then I, I tried to practice it and try to learn it. Don't be discouraged. If you don't have the money to do it, you can still do it and you can still learn how to play and practice without anything. So at the end of the day, the thing that's most important is to not let your limits limit you, especially your creativity. Because I sometimes feel like whenever that limit hits you, it allows you to grow in another way. Just like with me, when I first started playing the bass, I didn't say this at the beginning of the video. My bass was a four string and the intonation was so bad, which I didn't know anything about what intonation was, I couldn't play past the fifth fret. I was like, I knew something's wrong with my bass, but I didn't know what it was and I didn't have any money to do anything. So 
for the longest time, I would just learn all my songs within the first five frets of the bass. And so I got really, really good at those first five frets. And now that's even playing into my playing today is that knowing and not having the ability to be able to go all around the neck, it's kind of that limit helped me to have my thing, to have something that's different, to have something that nobody else necessarily has. So whenever you're limited, don't feel like there is an issue that you can't do it. You can do it, you just gotta figure out how to do it. If you have any questions about anything I covered in this video, feel free to drop a comment below. Hit me up on my Instagram, uh, at tdykes. So go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, so you're notified whenever the newest videos are coming available to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.